In the last episode, we saw how Zulaikha, the wife of Chief Minister Aziz, got infatuated with Prophet Yusuf salam and tried to seduce him. The Prophet, being a firm follower of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, resisted her advances. When her husband arrived, she lied to him, saying that the Prophet had tried to attack her. Fortunately, one of their relatives arrived at the scene, and after evaluating the proofs, he concluded that Zuleikha was lying. Aziz apologized to the Prophet and asked him to keep quiet about the whole incident. But news of this incident spread across town, and people started making fun of Zuleikha wherever she went. The women in town asked themselves, how could she desire a slave and put her reputation in jeopardy? Zuleikha couldn't bear this insult anymore. She decided to teach them a lesson by showing how irresistible the Prophet was. She then came up with a plan. She wrote a letter to all the noble women in town. She invited all of them for lunch at her palace. The women arrived. There was a beautiful table before them. Zuleikha then asked one of her maids to hand them knives to cut the fruit. Then suddenly, Zuleikha started speaking. Listen, everyone, she said. I have heard of those who say that I am in love with my slave. At once, everyone stopped what they were doing and fixed their gaze on the chief minister's wife. I admit that he is a charming fellow. I do not deny that I love him, as I have loved him for a very long time. The women present were stunned. They did not expect Zuleikha to be so open about the affair. Zuleikha then started telling them about her infatuation. By now, everyone had finished the dinner and the guests started cutting the fruit using the knife. It was then that Zuleikha summoned the Prophet. Prophet Yusuf salam walked into the hall gracefully with his gaze lowered. Raise your head, she asked. When the Prophet raised his head, the guests were dumbfounded. The Prophet's face was shining with angelic beauty. It reflected the innocence in his soul. They looked at him in wonder, without realizing that they were in fact cutting their palms. They were so absorbed by the angelic vision of the Prophet that they were bleeding. They were not feeling any pain at all. This is not a mortal, said one of them. He is an angel, said another. It was then that Zuleikha spoke to them. Look at your hands. The women were shocked to find that they were bleeding. This is the man because of whom you are blaming me for. I do not deny that I tried to seduce him. Look at your hands. Don't you understand that you too have been enchanted by him? I tried to seduce him once, but he refused. If he refuses to obey my order again, then he shall be cast into prison. The Prophet remained calm and said, I would rather go to prison than commit a sin. Saying this, he lowered his gaze and slowly left the room. Zuleikha was ashamed. She knew that if the Prophet remained free, people would mock at her. So that night, she tried to convince her husband. Aziz loved the Prophet like his own son, but he also wanted to avoid scandals. Even though he knew that the Prophet was innocent, he ordered the arrest and imprisonment of Prophet Yusuf The life of the Prophet is a perfect example of patience in the face of adversity. Throughout his life so far, the Prophet faced trials and tribulations with complete trust in God. Yet, here he was once again in an extremely difficult situation. It was now time for the Prophet to face his third test. The Prophet spent most of his time in prayers while in prison. It was during this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with the ability to interpret dreams. And pretty soon, everyone in the prison realized the greatness of the Prophet. 
and they all loved and respected him. He shared the cell with two other men. One was the cupbearer of the king, and the other was the king's cook. These two men recognized his piety and righteousness. The men woke up from their sleep. They are worried and scratched their heads. These men were having vivid dreams for the last few nights. So they decided to seek help from the prophet. I saw a dream in which I was pressing wine for the king, said the first man. I dreamed about birds eating bread from my head, said the other. I will tell you the meaning of these dreams by midday, said the prophet. Then the prophet prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his help to interpret the dreams. Then he called the cupbearer of the king and told him, This is what my lord has told me. You will soon be left free and will return to your service to the king. Then he called the cook. Your dream means that you will be crucified soon. Yusuf salam then told the cupbearer and requested him to remind the king about him. The man thanked him and promised that he will inform the king about the prophet. Like the prophet predicted, the cupbearer soon returned to the king's service, but Satan started playing his tricks. He made the cupbearer forget about Yusuf salam, and the prophet remained in prison for a few more years. It was during that time that the king of Egypt started getting strange dreams. The king dreamed he was standing on the banks of the Nile River. As he stood there, seven fat cows emerged from the river. This was followed by seven lean cows. The seven lean ones then swallowed the fat cows. In the next dream, he saw seven green ears of grain growing on the banks of the river Nile. They suddenly disappeared into the mud, and on the same spot grew seven dry ears of grain. The king was shocked, and he woke up terrified. He summoned his sorcerers, priests, and ministers, and asked them to interpret his dream. Don't worry, your majesty. It is just a nightmare, said his minister. He is right. It is just a dream, said the sorcerer. Like that, everyone arrived at the conclusion that there was nothing to worry about. It was then that the cupbearer remembered Prophet Yusuf salam from the prison. He told the king about the prophet and he rushed to the prison. He told the prophet about the king's dream and asked him to interpret it. Prophet Yusuf salam sought help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he explained the meaning of the dream to the cupbearer. It was like this. For the next seven years, the kingdom will have a rich harvest, and there will be more than enough food for all. This will be followed by seven years of drought, and there will be no water, and there will be scarcity of food all over the kingdom. When the cupbearer informed the interpretation to the king, he was really impressed. He asked the prophet to be set free immediately. The prophet was finally set free. When he arrived at the palace, the king was stunned to see this handsome young man. The king decided to test the prophet's knowledge and asked him many questions. The prophet remained calm and gave brilliant answers to each of the king's questions. The king realized that the prophet was very intelligent. The king then asked the prophet about the dream he had, and he wanted to know if there was any solution for this. The prophet advised the king to start planning right away. He asked the king to store the harvest from the years of abundance so that it can be used during the times of drought. The king was really impressed. He decided that no other man would be able to do this task better than the prophet. So, he appointed the prophet as the controller of granaries. Prophet Yusuf salam was responsible to guard the harvest for the tough times ahead. With this appointment, the prophet became one of the most important people in Egypt. The wheels of time had changed by now. During the rich years of harvest, 
the Prophet took care of cultivation, harvest, and storage of crops. He carefully saved the food for the drought that lay ahead. The king was really satisfied with the work of the Prophet. The king had admired him and sought his advice on many other issues as well. Time passed. The years of drought arrived. It didn't rain for months, and water dried up everywhere. The plants and animals started dying all around Egypt and other nations, but the Prophet managed the affairs of Egypt so well that there was enough grain to feed the people. People from neighboring lands flocked to Egypt, where the Prophet was selling food at a fair price. The drought had affected the land where Yaqub and his sons lived. They had been starving for days without anything to eat. When they heard that grains were distributed in Egypt, they decided to go there and try their luck. Hello kids! Did you like the video? Do you think the brothers will recognize the Prophet when they reach Egypt? <laughs> Don't forget to watch the next episode to learn more.